the Jack Benny Program. From San Francisco, California, starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, our little star is currently appearing here in San Francisco at the Kern Theater. At popular prices. <laughs> Continue, Don. It has been said that Jack Benny has made more people laugh in this town than any other comedian. That's right. And now I'd like to bring you the man who said it, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, considering that we're doing this show away from our hometown, I don't think that was much of an introduction. Frankly, Jack, I don't care what I say about you. <laughs> what? You heard me. Why should I say nice things about a man who's going to fire me? For heaven's sakes, I'm not going to fire you. Then why did you buy me a one-way ticket to San Francisco? <laughs> Because I couldn't get reservations back. Look, if you don't believe me, then get your own transportation back to Los Angeles and charge it to me. Okay. I'm going to make reservations for my return trip on the TWA bus. Bus? Look, down, the TWA is an airplane. It flies. Not when I'm on it. <laughs> That's right, Don. When you're on a plane, it's a bus. When you're on a train, it's a subway. <laughs> you can change anything. Oh, hello, Bob. Hello, Jack. Hi, you folks. <laughs> Say, I'm sorry I'm late, Jack, but I was writing a letter to my wife, and I didn't notice what time it was. Oh, that's all right, Bob. No, I sure miss the family. I was so lonely, I felt like calling June and having her fly up here with all the kids. Well, why didn't you? Oh, I don't know. Two weeks in a hotel with my wife and five kids. Gee, that could run into quite a bit of money. But, Bob, you're with me. If you miss your wife and five children, I insist that you call them and have them come up here. I'll pay for it. The trip? No, the call. <laughs> anyway, if you're lonesome, Bob, occupy your time. Go around. See the sight. Oh, well, that's what I've been doing for the past few days with the boys in the band. Oh, good. good. Are the fellows getting a kick out of San Francisco? Yeah, but I think this town has Remley confused. Frankie? Frankie, confused? Yeah. We were all walking along Market Street, and we came to the corner of Market and Powell, you know, where they turn the cable cars around? Oh, yes, yes. I've seen those turntables. So Remley took one look at it and yelled, Hey, dig that crazy record player. <laughs> No. Yeah. He stayed there for five days. He wasn't going to leave till they played Doggy in the Window. <laughs> Remley wouldn't leave. For what did you do? Well, we got the motorman to bark three times, and Frankie was happy. <laughs> well, that is one of the silliest things. Come in. Hello, Jack. Well, Giselle McKenzie. Hey, fellas, you know Giselle, don't you? Oh, well, certainly, Jack. She's appearing with you at the Kern Theater here in San Francisco. At popular prices. <laughs> She's very good, too. Say, Jack, I just dropped in to see if you had that arrangement for the new number you want me to try on Saturday's matinee. Oh, my goodness, I forgot it. I'll tell you what, Giselle, I'll call my hotel and have Rochester bring the arrangement over to you. Well, I'll be at the theater. Tell him to call my dressing room before he comes. You? You have a phone in your dressing room at the Kern Theater? Yes, I asked the manager for one, and he put it in. That's funny. I asked the manager to put a phone in my dressing room, and he turned me down. Hmm. I mean, what have you got that I haven't got? <laughs> Nothing, but I'm supposed to walk that way. <laughs> Well, look, I'll go out in the hall and call Rochester. There's a phone booth out there. I'll be right back. 
see that Giselle is a cute girl. So pretty, too. I think she likes me. Last night after the show, she came into my dressing room and ran her fingers through my hair. Boy, was she surprised when I walked in and caught her doing it. <laughs> I'll have one made out of mink. <laughs> Women love mink. Huh? Hmm, there's someone in the phone booth. Did you make your call, Jack? No, no, there was someone in the booth. I'll call later. Well, then I'd better run along. Oh, just a minute, Giselle. You don't think the audience here is going to let you get away without singing a song, do you? But, Jack, my contract with you calls for me to appear with you at the current theater, not to sing on your radio show. Oh, you're mistaken, Giselle. You see, the contract specifies... That you're to sing on my radio program, too. It's the last clause. Oh, so that's what the Chinese writing was. <laughs> yes, my lawyer is one long loophole. <laughs> now go ahead and sing, honey. Wonderful, Giselle. I really want to thank you for appearing on my program. Can you want joyful hunting my doing? Oh, you want your money, eh? How do you like that? I just took a wild guess. <laughs> you know, that's real cute, Giselle. You know, folks, we had the toughest time getting that Chinese line past the censor, you know. Anyway, oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, kids. Uh, 
Well, Mary, how are you enjoying yourself here in San Francisco? Huh? Oh, fine, Jack. But the funniest thing happened yesterday. What was it? I got on the cable car at the corner of Market and Powell, and when I gave my fare to the motorman, he barked at me three times. <laughs> No. If, if you don't believe me, ask Gramley. <laughs> he was lying right there on the sidewalk. Mary, a man with his eyes closed is not a witness. Uh, oh, hello, Giselle. Hello, Mary. Uh, Giselle, have you been having a good time in San Francisco? Oh, a wonderful time, Mary. I've been everywhere. By the way, have you been up to the top of the mark yet? Well, Jack promised to take me up, but he still hasn't. No, I'm a little afraid to go up there. I get dizzy, you know. So high. Jack, it is. He's so... talking about the prices. <laughs> oh, stop. Say, hey, Jack, when are you going to get me that musical arrangement you want me to rehearse? Oh, yes. Excuse me, kids. I'm going out and phone the hotel. When you say, I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. When you ask me. Oh, good. There's no one in the phone booth. Now, let's see. What's the number of the Fairmont Hotel? Oh, yes. Douglas, 28800. Fairmont Hotel, Knob Hill, overlooking the bay in San Francisco. Operator, I'd like to speak to... Um... Every room suited to your taste. Bachelor apartments, bridal suites, coffee shop, and spacious lobby. Operator, I'd like Elevator to Elevator talk... service, room service, tailor shop, jewelry shop, and radio in every room. Operator, I'd also, like to... Also, writing paper, pen and ink, and combination writing desk that folds up into a dresser. Operator, will you please get me the Daily number... Daily rates, weekly rates, monthly rates, and travelers' checks cash without question. Now, look, look, In operator... San Francisco, the only place to live is a Fairmont Hotel, Knob Hill, overlooking the bay. Operator, operator, I'm trying to get... I'm sorry, your three minutes are up. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't understand at all. She's a Fairmont operator. That was my last dime. I'll have to go back in the studio and borrow one. Uh, did you make the call, Jack? No, I had trouble with the operator, and I used my last dime. Why don't you try using your first one? <laughs> now, cut that out. Has anybody got a dime? Here you are, Jack. Thanks. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you laughing at, Mary? You know, Bob, Jack always has trouble wherever he goes. Well, I didn't know he had any trouble here in San Francisco. Oh, then you don't know what happened to him yesterday morning. No. Well, when did you hear this? Jack was asleep in his suite at the hotel, and Rochester was getting ready to wake him up. <laughs> Almost time for rehearsal. I better go in and wake the boss up. <laughs> but then he's been doing so many shows, he needs a little rest. Hello, Mr. Benny's room. Star of stage, screen, radio, and television. But we'll work for anything that jingles, folds, or has a paid in value. <laughs> Who's calling? The hotel manager? I know this is a classy hotel. I know it has a nice clientele. Okay, I'll tell him. Doggone, Mr. Bennett's just got to stop hanging his laundry out the window. <laughs> I don't mind in the winter, but in the spring, that long underwear looks ridiculous. <laughs> Uh-oh, look what time it is. I better wake him up. Look at him lying there, so nice and peaceful. Oh, Ava. <laughs> Kiss me, Ava. Come here, Alana. Let me put my arms around you. Come here, Marilyn. Kiss me. 
What a man. He lives like a lamb and dreams like a wolf. <laughs> boss, boss, wake up. Huh? What? Oh. Oh, it's you, Rochester. Yeah. How'd you sleep? Oh, not so good. That dog in the next room was whining all night. Imagine a dog being in the next room. Huh? Well, you better get dressed, boss. You'll be late for your rehearsal. Oh, I've been so busy, I forgot. Well, I better call downstairs and order your breakfast. Okay. Operator, get me room service, please. Room service? This is Mr. Benny's room. Send up some grapefruit juice. Small glass. Pot of coffee. Small pot. <laughs> a bowl of cereal. Small bowl. And make out the check while you're in that small mood. <laughs> And you better send up a couple of fried eggs. That's right. Okay, Mr. Benny, I ordered your breakfast. Good. Now, Rochester, I want to wear my blue suit tonight at the theater, so please press it, will you? But, boss, you know there's ballot service in this hotel, don't you? Of course I know, but what do you think I've got you for? Me? Yes, you. Well, listed alphabetically, attendant, actor, auto mechanic, barber. Look. Bartender, butler, bodyguard, bellhop, busboy. Look, Rochester. Cook, chauffeur, companion, charwoman, chambermaid. Rochester. That's I enough. got more of yours than the federal government. <laughs> now, Rochester. Now, stop with that talk and start pressing my blue suit. Okay. Dorman, dishwasher, dust... Rochester, stop complaining. <laughs> you... You don't do so much. All I know is, any time somebody asks me to shake their hands, I gotta put something down. <laughs> now, you know that's not true. Anyway, I've got to... Come in. Uh, room service with your breakfast, sir. Oh, good, good. Put, put it right here. Oh, good. Uh, put it right here on the table. Gee, it looks good, and I'm really hungry. There you are, son. Here's the check. Oh. Now, let's see. What? A dollar and 40 cents? Why, that's outrageous. Want me to call your lawyer? <laughs> no, one long loophole is out of town. <laughs> Waiter, how in the world could this be a dollar and 40 cents? Let's see, 35 cents for orange juice. Isn't that awfully high? Well, you see, sir, we don't grow oranges here. They come from Florida. So what? I don't have to pay for their vacation. <laughs> come well, I'm Florida. just a waiter, sir. I, I don't have anything to do with the prices. Now, look at this. Two eggs, 60 cents. Do you realize that's 30 cents an egg? Yes, sir. 30 cents for one little egg. What's in an egg that could make it worth 30 cents? Well, it's a whole day's work for a chicken. <laughs> That's a very old joke. Well, I thought it was funny when I heard it last night at the current theater. <laughs> at the current theater? At popular prices. <laughs> I know, I know. Now, let's see. 20 cents for a pot of coffee. Well, that's all right. Hey, what's that extra quarter for? Well, that's a 25-cent charge for serving meals in a room. Oh, well, open the door. I'll eat it out in the hall. <laughs> But that won't help, sir. All right, all right. Darn, I didn't order anything to have with my coffee. Waiter, what would you suggest? Well, we have donuts, Spanish pastry, French toast, and Cimarron rolls. <laughs> well, never mind. I'll, I'll drink my coffee without anything. Yeah, okay, goodbye. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's a tip for you. Oh, boy, this is wonderful. This is marvelous. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so very generous. Wait a minute. I only gave you a nickel. I know, but when you're not happy, just for it. And, uh... <laughs> Get out! What a silly guy. Now, Rochester, let's get... I wonder what he forgot. Come in. Hello, Jack. Oh, Mary, I thought you were the waiter. I didn't expect to see you at a rehearsal. Well, I came over because I wanted to see you alone. 
Why, anything wrong? Not exactly, but I was looking at the script for Sunday's program, and, Jack, I wish you'd tell your writers to stop writing things about my sister, Babe. She's sensitive. But, Mary... Like the thing they've got in this script. I'm supposed to say that it takes Babe longer to make up her face because she has to powder her noses. <laughs> but, Mary, it's just a joke. If they want a joke, let them make up something. <laughs> All right, I'll speak to him. Apologize to Babe. <laughs> hmm? And another thing. I noticed in going through the script, you plan to play your violin on the program. That's right. I'm going to play my violin. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yes, again. Oh, yeah. oh, Jack. Nobody wants to hear you play Love and Bloom. Mary, I've learned a new one. It's called Pretend. Now, wait. I'll get my violin and I'll play it for you. Here it is, boss. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. There's that dog again. Gentlemen, that concludes another program, and next Sunday we'll be doing another broadcast from San Francisco. I want to thank Giselle McKenzie for appearing on my show tonight. Well, it was a pleasure, Jack. And don't forget to tell the people about your stage show. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we'll still be at the Kern Theater for another week. At popular prices. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Good night, folks. next week to the Jack Benny Show. Don Wilson speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.